Good morning. It is Monday, October 23rd, 2023, and here are a few morning announcements for you today. This week is fall break. I am so excited. I hope you're excited too. Don't forget that that means you get an extra day this year because we're doing a special training with our staff on Thursday, which means you get a day off on Thursday, even though our staff has to come to work. And then Friday and next Monday are fall break this year. So enjoy a well-deserved break. Basketball season has started for most teams. And for those of you that are playing, just remember that this means your body is gonna be adjusting to less sleep and more physical activity. So make sure you eat a good breakfast, make sure you drink plenty of water, and think about how you're gonna stay focused and your best self at school. Um, Remember, how you behave at school affects your ability to be an athlete here at Clinton. Um, we don't believe in separating the two, so how you do in your classes and how you do with your behavior while you're during your school day will directly affect your ability to keep playing as an athlete. So just remember all of those things as you're moving into a really busy and fun basketball season. We can't wait um, for our first games for our, the different teams. Hot lunch this week is pancakes, sausage patties, scrambled eggs, fruit slush, and chocolate milk. Yummy hot lunch as we head into fall break. The verse this week is out of a passage in the Old Testament. It's 2 Chronicles 16, 9. And it says this, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What a fool you have been. From now on, you will be at war. Interesting verse, isn't it? This verse comes from the Old Testament, like I said, and it's part of a passage talking about a king who has, decides to be at war with God's people or is at war with God's people. And it's a, it's a longer story than what I have time today to tell the whole thing. But basically, in order to go against God's people, this king decides to be very sneaky and he decides to use, use all the gold in God's temple to pay off another king so that he will someday protect him and help him defeat the army of Israel, God's people, instead of just choosing to trust God. And this verse kind of picks it up in the conversation and says, because you are not trusting God, because you've chosen to go a different way, to be sneaky and go around his back and follow your own selfish desires, you are going to be at war now. Because the eyes of God are searching for people that are fully committed to him. You know, this verse reminds me that God is always looking for people that are fully committed people that are committed no matter what the cost is to them personally, people that do the right thing no matter what, people that aren't sneaky and trying to get around God's rules or laws or, or desires for us to be wholesome and good and righteous. And he calls us out when we don't do it. In this very passage right here, he, he just says, what a fool you've been. And he calls us out on that too. When we're not being obedient to him, when we're constantly trying to get around his ways, he calls us on it. And he says, what a fool. What a fool you've been when you've chosen to follow the ways of the world rather than be fully committed to me. You know, I wonder, are you fully committed? Some of you are very young that are listening to this verse. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade. What does it mean to be fully committed to Jesus at that age? It means spending time with Jesus, learning your Bible verse, going to church, obeying your parents, obeying your teacher. These are the ways you show that you're fully committed to Jesus. 
working as hard as you can on your schoolwork, being kind to everyone. Well, the older you get, what does it mean to be fully committed? It's a lot of the same things, but then it's even more. Choosing to do the right thing, even when no one else is. Not trying to be sneaky and avoid the things that God is calling you to. Not trying to get around the obedient side of being holy, but still call yourself a Christian. What does it take to be fully committed? The eyes of God are watching and he's looking for people that are fully committed, doing their very best every single day to live for him and not for themselves. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be at war. I don't wanna be at war with other people. I don't wanna be at war with myself. I don't wanna be at war with my conscience. I don't wanna be at war. I don't wanna be in conflict with anyone. And it seems to me in this passage, it means when I'm fully committed to God, he helps me not be that way. He helps me not be at war with others or with myself in turmoil. The eyes of the Lord are searching for those that are fully committed. Are you committed? I hope you are. Let's pray together and get started on this short week. God, thank you so much for loving us and making a way for us to be fully committed to you. Thank you that your Holy Spirit helps us stay committed once we've decided and chosen to be your children and to accept the gift of your salvation. Thank you that you help us then live for you. God, there are some that are listening to this video that are not fully committed. They have decided to serve themselves. They've decided to follow the ways of the world and they're not doing their best to be wholesome and obedient and right and true to your word and your call. God, help, help those that are committed Help protect those, protect those that are committed. Protect those that are doing their very, very best. Strengthen them. Like this verse says, strengthen those that are committed. Thank you, God, that we can lean on this promise and we can trust in your strength when we are doing our very best to be committed to you. Thank you, God, for today. And for all that is ahead of us this week, give us an awesome short week together. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a great day, Clinton.